Hello, everyone. My name is Tristan Watson. And I'm Sir Falcasa. Yeah. And this is the BM Podcast. Today, we're talking about... Uh, American Vandal, season two, in yeah. particular. A lot of people who have been waiting for this for a while, um, yeah. me in particular, because yeah. the first season was so, 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 so good. Yeah. Um, you saw the first season, right? Yeah, I've seen the first season twice now. <laughs> I can't even count how many times I've seen it. It's yeah. been so many. Mm-hmm. And I remember the first season was kind of crazy. People were like really freaking out about it because it seemed like this kind of college humor-esque sketch. Mm-hmm. It actually, I think, really was by college humor, I think. Or they were like uh, part of the production. Feels like a college humor sketch. Like, that went stretched on. out. In yeah, like gone on like way too long. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but it, so it was this ridiculous little idea that ended up being this literal... Peabody award-winning show that was like a surprisingly poignant social commentary yeah. for a show that was about drawing dicks on cars. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then season two came out and people were like, all right, can they strike lightning twice? And what do you think? Now, my overall impression of season two was it was like just a little bit under season one. Like it was really good. I mostly agree. Yeah. It, I would say that it was very convoluted in the most mockumentary fashion type way, <laughs> but it definitely still kind of hit below the mark for me. Yeah. I mean, like it, I don't think I enjoyed it quite as much as season one, uh, but at the same time, season one set, set such a high bar. Yeah. That's kind of really. So the fact that it even came close is really an accomplishment. Yeah. So season two. Uh, it's different from season one because season one was just about one crime. It was someone drew 27 penises onto 27 different cars in a faculty parking lot. Mm-hmm. Season two is centered around, around a bunch of different crimes um, in a kind of Zodiac killer style fashion where people are trying to find out who's the person that keeps doing these crimes. Who done it? Exactly. I mean, like yeah. the first one is the who done it too, but like this one's more pressing because he's still out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like four pranks, I think. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the big difference between the two. And also, season two has um, Peter and Sam. Mm -hmm. Uh, The big difference is, whereas in the first season, they were in their own school. In season two, they're transplants. They're going to another school. Yeah. That's the big two differences, I'd say, between season one Mm -hmm. and season two that make it different. (coughs) Yeah, no, definitely. um, What stands out the most for me between season one and season two is just essentially the characters themselves. Um, Season one, of course. You mean like the characters that... The, the, the remaining characters or do you mean like like the overlap characters or like the, the season two season one of course follows more so the story of Peter and Sam as they try to solve the crime uh-huh. season two is more about Peter and Sam just watching a crime unfold and trying to solve a mystery yeah if that makes sense Wait, I think that's related to the fact that they're not in the same school yeah because like whereas in season one it's like they were explaining things to the audience directly because it was like, oh yeah, this guy is like whatever, whatever, because mm-hmm. they like they know about what, what lunch means to the seniors in season one because they yeah. are school students there. Yeah. In season two, it's like they're kind of like audience avatars yeah. where they're learning things just as the audience is learning them. Yeah. Yeah. So like it does make it a, a bit of a less engaging thing because. Yeah. In season one, they felt more like characters, where mm-hmm. like they had personal stakes in the story. That's true. And you know, like, remember that scene in season one where like uh, Peter is talking with Dylan, and he's like mad. He's like, "I got suspended for you. Like, I have my own. Like, they had personal yeah. stakes in the story." Whereas in season mm-hmm. two, it's just like much more. They have a professional distance. Yeah. You know. Yeah, which I guess is like its own representative form of growth. You know. That, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that Peter is more of a professional. Well, I say professional, but. Um, he's, he's a high schooler, but yeah, yeah, he's a high schooler, but um, definitely more professional equipment than I have. So. True. Uh-huh. Although uh, that's actually one of the things that I love about season two was they explained that oh yeah, actually Netflix is a character in right. the show, yeah. and like the reason season one looked so great was because Netflix gave them a bunch of money. Yeah, to redo and, half their stuff. I gotta yeah. say, as a mass comm major, I was feeling really bad about myself. Yeah. And it's dumb because I know these are fictional characters, but I was like, oh, yeah, why is like, this college sophomore, <laughs> why is this high school sophomore doing things that yeah. are way better than I could ever dream of Yeah, making? exactly. Like, I really like how basically this season they got that Netflix money, you know what mm-hmm, I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They essentially could, like, I remember one scene where Sam buys, like, seven hats. Like, yeah, who needs <laughs> seven hats, right? If you're a good reporter, if you want to talk to a source, right, you'll go that distance. <laughs> Yeah, you'll pay all your money, all of that Netflix money. Yeah, I just, um, 
it was a bit disappointing to see that they weren't as in, they weren't as, as characters as much. Like yeah. you didn't see them interacting as much. You didn't see Sam and Peter being friends as much. Yeah, which is you know I mean that was a part of the magic of the first season. Mm-hmm. But I mean, after the first couple episodes, I think that it starts to come back a little bit. But it was never their relationship with each other. And the relationship with the project itself mm-hmm. wasn't as prominent as it was in the early season, which yeah. is makes sense in terms of like a character arc, but mm-hmm. it just makes for less engaging TV. Yeah, it it definitely put me out of distance. I would yeah, say. yeah. Know. But um, another thing that also I would be that I wanted to discuss was like the the vandals themselves, mm-hmm. like comparing uh, Kevin McLean, aka Shit Saint McLean, with Dylan Maxwell, mm-hmm. like. So, what did you think about Kevin McLean and Dylan Maxwell, actually? Um, so, starting off with Dylan Maxwell, of course, like, he's, like, an idiot, but he's <laughs> not, like, a malicious idiot, you know? Like, he didn't do the dicks, obviously. Yeah. But, at the same time, like, you feel like you can root... I felt like I could root more for Dylan Maxwell than I could for Kevin McLean. Really? Yeah. I Why felt is that? Because, I don't know, it just felt like... Dylan just seemed like a hapless idiot. Like, I guess, like, <laughs> yeah. you feel bad <laughs> for stupid people, I guess, is, like, one way to go about Maybe, it. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, Kevin, I don't know. I really didn't like Kevin's character overall. You know? Really? I thought, like, he was acting so well, you could tell he was acting, if that makes sense. Like, his character mm-hmm. was very, like, over the top. Yeah. And, like... I would have toned him down just a little bit. Just a tad. Yeah, just I, a tad. Okay, so like I see where you're coming from. Yeah. Like that perfect description was, I forget who it was, but someone was like, yeah, the thing with Kevin is like, he's like doing a really good impression of a smart person. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's exact. <laughs> I know people who are like yeah. always, you know, like trying to yeah. seem more intelligent than they are. Dylan Maxwell was, uh, I, I, I'm with you. I thought that he was like a more interesting character. Yeah. I think that like, I just think he's a great actor, and like he, I, I, my description of him yeah. was that he took uh, mouth breathing to a high art, which I totally <laughs> believe. <laughs> mouth like, breather. No, he uh. was a mouth breather. Like, <laughs> just all the, the dumb stuff. He, like, my favorite line of his, I think, was, uh, yeah, he's talking about him and his girlfriend. He's like, yeah, I remember the first time that we ever like hooked up. Like, we were doing like resin hits off my brother's bowl, <laughs> and we like drank your mom's really nice bottle of tequila. Yeah. We got so messed up. I don't even remember it. Yeah. Now I'll never forget. Like, he's just, well, yeah, yeah, like, it he's just, just fits, so stupid. Yeah, it just fits so well. Like, I mean, prop, uh, shout out to Jimmy Chaitro. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely think that he's, at least in that role, a very good actor. I'm, I was actually ticked that he didn't get nominated for uh, Best Actor in a Comedy. Yeah. Because I thought he thoroughly deserved it. Yeah. Like, um, how well can you play stupid? Mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. yeah. And he's just also just a super funny actor. Uh, mm-hmm. And Kevin McLean, I thought that, like, I thought they kind of grabbed the essence of a certain kind of dude that, like, yeah. in the same way that, like, you know, like, you knew Dylan Maxwell. Like, I'm yeah. sure that was a person, like, he's the kind of kid that, that would, like, go to the go to the pencil sharpener mm-hmm. and then just sharpen it so much louder than he needs to. Yeah. Like, the manual one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And actually, he does that, though. He actually he did, did Yeah, do he does that. that. I forgot. <laughs> he does that. He's like, well, I just, like, get, like, really sharp. Like, yeah, you know that really particular kind of douche. Yeah. <laughs> and I also knew that particular kind of pretentious douche yeah uh in, in in kevin yeah so but like yeah i agree with you like it definitely isn't uh doesn't really hit the same way yeah also like one of the big differences between season two and season one was uh season one had a lot more contrast and a lot more uh wait season saturation two? saturation yeah. yeah saturation and contrast weren't they trying to imitate well, another type of uh documentary it was like wormwood or something was it I yeah heard that and yeah. i haven't seen wormwood so i don't know like, it's, so do you think that, that like more understated that more um, yeah. muted color palette is like in reference to yeah that? the more dramatic kind of like scene recreation is what they were going for so <clears throat> I get. Like, I mean, sure. Like in like the mm-hmm. flashback stuff. Yeah. But like even like during like just like. But they're in Seattle though, so I could just be like Seattle. It's just has no color. That's Seattle weather. You know, it's just really moody. Yeah. yeah. But like me personally, I just I don't know. I'm just I like. I'm like a, I, I want color in my in my in my images. <laughs> yeah. So like I think just for that reason alone, I just liked it. Honestly, but from what I've noticed, they really love the black athlete in. Um, Season two. Um, what oh, was Demarcus. It? Demarcus William? Tillman. 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 Yeah. Not Williams. Yeah. 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 Um, I, thought I thought he was great, by the way. Yeah. He I was thought, so funny. Yeah. Which is kind of like an un, like, or not well talked about 
I guess, social commentary mm -hmm. about how, you know, black athletes in private schools are gods, essentially, because it doesn't matter how wrong, like, I know someone who, no matter how wrong he did, mm -hmm. you know, who was still, like, well-liked by pretty much everyone in the community. It does definitely kind of, t when I was watching that, like, I never went to a private school, but what, mm -hmm. what kind of hit me was kind of, uh, it reminded me of college, college players. Like, how much they're kind of a commodity to the school because, like, yeah. they bring in so much money to the school so much that money. they're going to... But I didn't know that was, like, a thing in high school as well. But yeah. that makes sense, honestly, come to think mm -hmm. of it. Like, yeah. weird thing to think about that at the age of 17 and 16, you're already, like, becoming a commodity to the right. school. A commodity to just basically everyone in general. Especially how his friend was basically trying to sell him off. True. Like, yeah. he was kind of pimping him out, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. it was in a really weird... And that, that's one of the things I love about this season is, like, I think that season two mm -hmm. had a lot more... Had more fleshed out characters. Yeah, definitely. Not, not in terms of, like, how fleshed out they but in, in, in quantity of characters. I mean. Right. Like, yeah. it had more characters that were really fleshed out. Yeah, that you can actually, like, follow and, like, see their story and kind of have an arc. Yeah, yeah like, um, what was yeah. the guy, Demarcus is the guy from Dear White People? Uh, Lou. Lou, Lou yeah. yeah. Like, that was an amazing, like, he was, that was, like, an amazing, like, Iago type of, like, from, like, from Othello. Yeah. Like, he was just, like, this, like, manipulator from the background, like, pulling strings. Mm -hmm. That was a super interesting character, one that I was not expecting to see. Yeah, like, I, that, when they started, like, revealing that part of the arc, I was like, wow. Like, this is this is actually like pretty well thought out. Right. I thought he was just insignificant, like the second man, and that's like that's it. I thought it was gonna be a thing where like um, I don't know, like he was just like bitter and jealous, but he was always being the number two, which would have been a yeah. cool story, but it was kind of predictable. Kind of. The fact that they yeah. flipped it and made it so that no, he's the one, he's the Cheney. Right. He's like you know, <laughs> like he's, yeah. And yeah, I just thought that was like a super interesting. Move and also like, he's not the only one. Just, just the the entire manipulation factor of like all the vandals that were involved in the season, just absolutely blew my mind. I was actually pretty impressed. Um, it's kind of a brilliant move. Like yeah. you don't see it, you're expecting it to be one person, but in reality, you see how one person's manipulating all these people by being a catfish yeah. and sort of like blackmailing them. And it's it's just all the different victims of. Of the turd burglar, which mm -hmm. is a ridiculous sentence, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. all the different victims of the turd burglar had these like really like that one kid, the, the diaper kid. Yeah, his entire thing was like, yeah, you know, like my girlfriend, I I was suspended, so I couldn't go to prom, so I let this guy take up my girlfriend to prom because he's not gonna do it. Like, yeah. they'd be like, oh yeah, I changed in front of him. Like, I've known dudes like that who yeah. were like, not gay or asexual but like are just not taken like seriously, seriously as a romantic or sexual prospect by you know girls and like just how much that affects them yeah and it was such like a it, my heart broke for that kid yeah. honestly and like all the really things that puts to him, him. It really puts him into a dark place i really do love the actually all the characters of you know the people involved in the turbo first crimes you know mm -hmm. I, I definitely think that it, you really can kind of understand that morality has a gray area. You know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That they're not just doing this to be heinous or just because, but they were blackmailed, you know, mm -hmm. really. Um, and sometimes, you know, things aren't so black and white when it comes to, you know, people who get involved in situations like this. What I love was about the, about the season was how they made it so that Kevin wasn't one of the people that was blackmailed and that he just did it of his own volition. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it was really like in season one they made it so that oh it's Dylan definitely didn't do it like it's yeah. and like they had like a bittersweet ending but his bittersweet ending was yeah he didn't do it and like he's not expelled he's come back mm -hmm. but he doesn't get that sweet moment of revenge from Shapiro his yeah. girlfriend leaves him he doesn't get to college he is and then he has that moment again at the very end yeah the this, situation is still very very real like mm -hmm. it's not a it's not a fairy tale ending well, this is like weirdly inverse where like with this one it's like he did do it or not all of it he did do part of it and he did yeah. still get like punishment mm -hmm. but his ending at the end is like a lot more optimistic and he's a lot more like all right maybe I can like come out of this and like yeah I, this is something that happened to me and I'll put it behind me and next semester it'll, it'll be all fine but yeah so I just thought it was really uh, cool uh, the different like similarities but and the contrasting elements of season one and two I think are really interesting to compare just because of like the thing the lessons they learned mm -hmm. I think it's, it's it's both in terms of like what the showrunners learned but also what the characters learned mm -hmm. it's interesting to see the evolution of the show mm -hmm. on Fortunately, all the ways that those like lessons manifested in this season made it so that it was a 
slightly less enjoyable season, but still ultimately really, really good. Really good. I enjoyed like all the bold directions they went with this. Yeah. Because like in the first season, they were the main commentary was talking about like what what's it like to what's going to happen to a person when you keep telling them they're one way? Or like how mm-hmm. long can a person endure that before you start to believe them? Yeah. And season two, the biggest thing was a huge commentary on social media, but not like in a black mirror yeah. What if your wife was an app kind no, of way? Not, yeah, it's not like looking to the future. It's more like this is what's actually happening now. Type. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but in this, it's like a much more like nuanced and uh, complex thing where it's like, yeah, we do put up our best versions of ourselves, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because we can all, I don't know, I just. Mm-hmm. I like, yeah, I do like the, 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 the fact that they added the part about like, even though we represent ourselves differently online, it doesn't necessarily mean that we are bad people for it. Mm-hmm. It's just about how we essentially let our representations of ourselves online affect who we are when we're offline, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I think was like a big issue, yeah. um, especially with a lot of characters in this season, um, particularly, what's her name? Um, the, the rich girl? Jenna Hawthorne, yeah, I believe Jenna Hawthorne. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, like she was so well at performing online that it started people bought it yeah people bought it and when they realized that that's not necessarily the case like people were ready to eat her up Mm -hmm. like they were ready Mm -hmm. to destroy her yeah which I thought was I thought was pretty interesting and they're gonna be doing a season three probably right yeah which I actually wanted to ask like closing out what do you think it's gonna yeah season one was dicks Uh season two was poop uh-huh. What is the, I was thinking vaginas. Um, definitely a stretch. Um, if it's all related to toilet humor, <laughs> um, then definitely, yeah, it's very possible. Talking about the JJs. The J- oh God. <laughs> I'm actually really curious to see where, like, are they going to be in college now? Like, are they going to graduate high school and be done and then be in college? Like, with, like where is the where is the setting gonna be next? I don't. So it's it's kind of like Twenty Two Jump Street for me. Yeah. Where like one was great, mm-hmm. and then two was a uh, a surprising revisiting of that greatness. Yeah. I'm not sure if they can do the same thing in the third season where it's gonna be the exact same thing. I, I'm not sure if I'm not sure that they can do the same formula again. And like granted, you know, one and two mm-hmm. are different in their own yeah. ways, but like it's still immature crime mm-hmm. at a high school, I think they're going to have to change it up in some way, yeah. whether that be because they're in college yeah. or whether that be because it's just not even a student environment at all. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but what I just you, think something's got to change. What do you think that they're going to mock next for their mockumentary? Like Evil I'm Genius not super or? familiar with like true crime stuff. Yeah. True crime like documentaries or mockumentaries. Um, mm-hmm. So, I couldn't say. And it's because like, I, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not sure where they're going to go because season one was about vandalism. Yeah. Season two was about, like, poison and, like, yeah, not really, low-key yeah. biochemical warfare. Yeah. <laughs> like, not exactly vandalism. You're right. Yeah. yeah so, like, I don't know what, what the next crime is going to It could be anything. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the fact, how much they've, like, diverted with season two and, like, making it so that it wasn't one person. It was, like, blackmail. They did all these things that kind of broke the mold from the first season that I have no idea where it's going to go. Yeah. But I'm excited nonetheless. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I'm right behind you. I have no idea where they're going to go next, but um, I just can't wait for that season three trailer. If you had to give it a rating, like, out of out of ten? Um, I'd definitely give it a eight out of ten. I'd give it, like, I think eight and a half um, cat poop t-shirts, so <laughs> out of ten. <laughs> or eight out of ten... Frozen yogurt cards mistaken for felony evidence. Yeah. Out of 10. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go with that. Yeah. All so right. uh, I guess that's us signing off then. Yeah. I'm I'm not Tristan. I'm Seraphel. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not Seraphel. I'm Tristan. So. Bye. Bye. <laughs>